You're listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Rajesh Rajpal. He's joining us here from Johnson & Johnson Vision to talk about their Technus Synergy. It's been launched here in the United States. It's a next generation uh, PCIOL. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio, Dr. Rajpal. Thank you, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here. What is your uh, professional background? I do understand that uh, you are an ophthalmologist. As a matter of fact, I believe you're the first uh, eye surgeon in D.C. to perform laser vision correction uh, back in the uh, clinical trials for the FDA for a laser vision correction. Yeah, Neil, I am an ophthalmologist. I specialize in corneal surgery, cataract surgery, and refractive surgery. So, yes, I've been fortunate to be involved in uh, clinical trials for multiple products over the years. I do practice in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, part-time because I am also the chief medical officer and I lead the clinical and medical affairs teams for Johnson & Johnson Vision. Um, so it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to look at uh, technology and uh, products that we at J&J are innovating that really impact uh, patients and the ability for eye care professionals to provide those all across the world. What would you say are the major eye-related issues today, and particularly as we age, what should we expect? Well, as uh, as we age, certainly cataracts are the most common and normal um, change that occurs in, from a visual perspective. That is because the lens of the eye naturally becomes more cloudy, and that's what a cataract is. Um, and it's actually estimated that over 100 million eyes across the world are impacted by cataracts that are the leading cause of preventable blindness because it is correctable. But there are other conditions as well, certainly presbyopia, which is the need for reading glasses as we get older. Mm -hmm. Dry eye gets worse as we get older. Glaucoma, which is high pressure. Um, and then there can be other retinal conditions as well. Uh, so there are a number of changes that patients and all of us need to be aware of. And that's the importance of being able to see, you know, an eye care professional to um, make sure that everything remains healthy. You mentioned cataracts right off the bat, but for those of us who may not be familiar, what are cataracts? How, how do they develop? You know, you say that it gets naturally milky. Is that something that we should all expect or is there some type of uh, condition that has to exist for that to happen, even though there's a hundred million eyes affected? Well, it is normal. Um, the natural lens of the eye um, is what does most of the focusing for us. And when we're born, it's completely clear normally. As we age, the, the lens becomes uh, cloudier. It becomes dense, more dense, um, or more cloudy and more dense. And that's a natural process that we cannot completely stop. There are certain conditions that cause that uh, cataract to develop at an earlier age. For example, patients who are diabetic, um, patients who smoke, if they have had a family history of early cataracts, if they've ever had an injury or certain medications like uh, steroids um, that can all contribute to, to developing cataracts earlier. But otherwise, by age 75, about half of all Americans have cataracts. And again, that's a normal process. And hopefully we all live long enough to have cataracts. When cataracts are developing, is is this something that we can recognize right away and say, oh, yesterday I didn't see this way today that I do? Or is it so gradual that um, you don't even know that you are in the development of stages of cataracts? Well, there are certain conditions where it can develop more quickly, but in general, it's a very gradual process. And so, yeah, your point is absolutely valid that um, it's important to be able to understand um, those symptoms. And typically it's really just decreasing clarity. It'll be vision that's blurry or cloudy. Um, sometimes it can be noticing more uh, glare or halos around lights, um, especially oncoming headlights, for example. Um, colors can fade some. It's something where if the vision isn't clear, then cataracts are certainly one of the possible causes. And that's why, uh, again, we always want to encourage uh, people to see a, a, an eye doctor and make sure that that is the, the reason that nothing else is happening. Now, it's my understanding that surgery is the way to treat cataracts. That, that's correct. Yes. Uh, cataract surgery is the most commonly performed procedure uh, in the U.S. and in the world because this is a natural process. And we have um, both eyes um, to operate on, of course. Mm -hmm. 
But cataract surgery is extremely successful, fortunately. Um, it has become even more safe and effective over the years because it's done through a very small incision. And really for most patients, it is truly um, impactful because Fortunately, most patients very shortly after cataract surgery see quite well, and that allows them to function uh, much better. You've launched uh, Technus Synergy. Exactly what is this technology and how does it advance cataract surgery? So, yeah, let me explain kind of what happens during cataract surgery. Maybe that'll help um, put in perspective the Absolutely. importance of, of this technology. So during cataract surgery, a very small incision is made, generally doesn't need sutures. And then we use what's called phaco emulsification, which is ultrasound energy to break apart that cataract, um, which is a, that dense lens we talked about, similar to what's done with kidney stones, where ultrasound is used to break those apart. Um, so once that lens is broken apart, it's aspirated out, those, those particles, and then a artificial lens implant, which is designed to be the power that's needed for that individual patient's eye, is implanted. So that lens, the intraocular lens, is the, the most important part of how we then focus after cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. And so the type of lens that's implanted becomes extremely critical. So what you're describing in terms of Technus Synergy, let me broaden that first. The Technus family of intraocular lenses is what J&J has produced for now 20 years. And it's considered really um, a, a family of intraocular lenses that allows great quality of vision, mm -hmm. um, and we have various types of lenses within that family, depending on what may be appropriate for an individual patient. The Technus Synergy in particular is a presbyopic correcting lens, which presbyopia, as we chatted about just a little bit ago, is the need for reading glasses that occurs as we get older. So a presbyopia correcting lens gives a range of vision from distance to intermediate to near. So it allows patients to minimize how much they will have to use glasses after cataract surgery. Yeah. And certainly, as you know, since all of us have so much greater demand for, you know, tablets, phones, computers, you know, on Zoom these days, uh, you know, through the pandemic, uh, of course, um, you know, it's nice to have that range of vision. And the Technus Synergy was designed to give that continuous range of vision, even in dim light settings. And so that, that's been a major advance. And, and, uh, and ophthalmologists around the world are really excited now to have uh, have this technology. Once the patient has undergone surgery, do the cataracts tend to, to recur? Is this something you say, the, the widest range of vision, does that vision remain that wide and diverse throughout the rest of their lives or are, are more surgeries necessary? And if so, does Technosynergy reduce the number of surgeries after that initial one? Now, fortunately, cataract surgery is permanent. Okay. The intraocular lenses are permanent. Um, so there is not anything else that typically needs to be done to the intraocular lens. The, the only thing that happens as we naturally continue to age, the outer capsule of the original cataract um, does become a little more cloudy. And that sometimes is referred to as a secondary cataract, but that's unrelated to the intraocular lens. Um, and if that becomes cloudy, that is a very... Um, short laser procedure that is done just at um, um, sitting up so a patient doesn't need any anesthesia or anything, and that capsule is opened. But that's unrelated to the lens, unrelated to the original surgery, but that is a normal process. Give us a website where our listeners can learn more about uh, Johnson & Johnson's Technus Synergy platform. Sure. Um, the website for patients is jjvision.com, and we also have a website for healthcare professionals called jjvisionpro.com. And on, on that website, there's information on what I was describing in terms of the phaco emulsification equipment as well, because we have launched a new phaco emulsification unit that recently was cleared by the FDA also called Veritas. And that also is a major advance in what we do in cataract surgery. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on uh, Health Professional Radio. Thank you very much, Dr. Rajpal. Neil, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Rajesh Rajpal, Global Head of Clinical and Medical Affairs at Johnson & Johnson Vision. Audio copies of this program are available at hpi.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.